Good morning y'all. Today we're about to head up to Surf Supply Oceanside or Fiberglass Source if you're looking for it on maps uh, to go get our blank and then we're going to head to the shaping room and start actually shaping it. Access granted. Welcome back all you Barneys. We're going to be turning this thing into that thing. And the very first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is tuck in your shirt so you don't get it caught in the planer because that's happened to me multiple times. And if you have long hair, it's a good idea to put in a hair tie. We are going to flip our blank over and we're gonna look at it. That's something that pretty much nobody does. Jim taught me this because sometimes when people glue up blanks, they do a bad job and it comes out all lumpy. But this looks pretty good. So now that we check that, we go over here and find our template that we made. If you guys haven't seen the video on how to make a template out of RAM board, go check that out at the end of this video. We're going to lay it out, make sure it fits. And it looks like it fits beautifully. I'm going to go ahead, take my big razor plane here and block down the stringer just a little bit. Now that the stringer is pretty close to flush, I'm going to take our template, lay it out. We're going to trace it one time before we do anything, just to make sure that our template looks good. I eyeball it out by jiggling it and making it look like it's fairly straight across the board. Line it up with the center of the stringer, which is totally a lot easier when you're using plywood stringers. Gonna do the exact same thing up here on the nose. And you don't have to clamp it, I like to. It's a little bit more accurate. Never put your clamps in too tight or else you'll put a hole in your board. So now that I've clamped out the board and laid down a weight in the center, I'm gonna draw a line on this side, flip the template over and repeat the process. When I clamp, I put the clamp on the opposite side of the board that I'm templating so that I can get every little bit of the template drawn out. I also like to lay down something bigger and flat in the very center of the template so that it lays the edges down nice and even when you're using RAM board, that's important. If you're using something like Masonite, it's not gonna be such a big deal. It's better to not press down too hard and stab your pencil all the way into the foam. As I mentioned in the very first video, it's good to have your pencil sharp, but not too sharp. Once it's too sharp, it just becomes more like a needle. And if it's too dull, it doesn't do anything. So just run over it once lightly and go back again carefully if it's clamped and that's how you're gonna get a good dark line. Now we're going to go ahead and skin the blank. Put on your mask or else you'll get 500 different types of cancer in 10 minutes. You want earmuff or you'll go deaf. Eee. So the first thing you're gonna wanna know is how to hold your planer. It's very good to take your planer, wrap your arm under the cord, and then grab onto the handle. This way, your planer cord doesn't go ahead and get cut inside of there. You have a lot more control. Now, since I ordered this blank with a very similar rocker to the board that we're copying, I'm just gonna do one fully open pass and then I'm going to follow the curve of the blank. As you can see, we went right around the outline. I'm gonna do one more open pass, exactly the same, but cutting this part of the foam now. For this next pass, I'm going to straighten out this line. So I'm basically gonna start 
maybe a foot in from the nose and I'm gonna try and make this line connect straight to about a foot in from the tail. Now we're gonna do that exact same thing and just straighten out all these cuts up to the stringer and everything is on a full open cut so it's torqued as open as it goes. See the little shoe here? When you move this thing, that thing moves. Now we're going to repeat that process just on the other side. Wow, you guys are still here. I must be amazing. So stick around to the end because I'm going to be announcing something cool that you're gonna to wanna to hear. Now that we've switched off the overhead lights, I can see a lot better, and I see I miss this little, little part right here. I would not recommend you guys immediately go for it with the planer. If this is your first time using the planer, it's gonna be a lot better if you take your shear form, or if you take a sanding block or something else. I'm gonna take it away with the planer because I have experience doing it, but if you don't have experience doing it, it's probably gonna make a big hole somewhere, so. Just take that into consideration. That was step one, skinning the blank. And step two is gonna be looking at the rocker to see what we're gonna do next. I like to put my blank, whatever you would call it, that way on the racks and then I get down and squat so that I can look at what the rocker is doing and see the different break points and all the different things that I'm gonna want to do to it. So I can see that this already looks pretty dang good. I'm not gonna have to do too much. So now I'm gonna go ahead and skin the deck. Very similar process. The only thing is it's a little bit trickier since you have the rocker up here in the nose. What you're gonna need to do is start a little bit further down on your board and have your planer at an angle like this, not too much of an angle or you'll just put a large hole in your board. You want it just maybe like a 45 degree angle to the stringer. You're gonna repeat the same process that you did on the bottom. This blank has a very flat deck, so it's a lot easier. If you have a blank with a very domed deck, it might be a good idea to start and do one long cut throughout the center and work your way out. So it's kind of opposite. I'll show you guys that on a blank in a later video though. Now I'm gonna check the thickness, and once I know the thickness, I'm gonna clean up this a little bit, then we'll get to cutting our outline. So we're at two and three quarters thick. That's about where I want it, so I'm just gonna clean this up really lightly with the planer, and then we're going to go ahead and cut out our outline. Now I'm gonna go ahead, I flip the blank over, clean up the little bumps that might be there or not with the planer. Uh, if you're more experienced with the planer, go ahead and do that. This is gonna give you the best final product. But you remember, you don't have to open your shoe all the way. You can do what's called planer sanding. Just barely open it and take really slow, light cuts and it's gonna give you a better product than if you just go at it like, yeah, like, a lot of shapers do so be patient be gentle and kind and your surfboard will come out a lot better
Now, since I have horrendous OCD, I'm gonna run over it with my sheer form really quick just to get any little scratches out and make it look super pretty. I put the template back on there. We're gonna outline it for real this time, so I'm gonna blow all the dust off and then we'll get to it. Now that we're outlining it for real, we're gonna take a little bit more time laying it out. So I'm gonna take my shaper square, mark the nose, we're gonna butt it up to there, clamp it, and then, yeah, we're gonna be ripping. Again, all we're doing is repeating the process of what we did earlier, just with a little bit more precision. So, like I said, we're doing this with more precision. We mark the nose. Now that we have the overall length, uh, I'm gonna take my template again and mark the tail. Just to make sure that we do everything very symmetrical because we're trying to make a symmetrical surfboard as of now. Again, we just did the exact same thing, flipped the template over, clamped it, put our little thing in the middle, and we butted up right to the lines on the nose and the tail, so we're nice and even. Now we're going to cut the outline, woohoo! So we're gonna take our saw. I'm right-handed, so I'll stand on the right side of the blank. So, it's like this. I take my saw, I take my thumb, this nice thing right here, and I lay it like this. You can do it this way, you can do it this way, I kinda go like this, so that I can ensure when I start my cut, I have a nice straight line. And then go slowly, don't try and hack it. Uh, just go really slow, gently back and forth, let the tool do the work. If you're really working hard, that means you're not doing it right. One more thing. Hey! You wanna keep the saw at a 90 degree angle? You probably can't tell, but this is 90 degree angle. do the same thing on the tail. I take my saw, line it up with my line, use my thumb as a guide, but you don't want to cut yourself so don't do that. Here comes the hard part. We take our saw, our special cut saw, and we're gonna go 90 degree angle. You're gonna love 90 degree angles once you start shaping surfboards. So instead of trying to cut around this little corner right here, this saw is way too wide, the blade is, we're never gonna make it around that curve. So I'm just gonna start, lined up with my curve right here, cause I know we're gonna start cutting this way. So I'm gonna start here, and you always wanna stay at least an eighth of an inch outside of your pencil line. Again, please go very slow or you're gonna to have to get a new blank. And I use my hand to change the angle of the blade to get around the outline of the blank. Some people have full old wood saws and they just do some crazy stuff bending it like this and that. I don't like that, so I use this. Do whatever you feel comfortable with. I'm gonna hold this part, this dangly part right here with my hand, because as we get up to the nose, there's only gonna be a tiny little bit of foam holding there. And if I don't hold it, that opens up the opportunity 
for this whole piece to just break off in a chunk and then you're not stuck. So I'm gonna hold it with my hand as I finish the turn. Come to an end. Very good to put your bones, the rails of your surfboards, out of the way because if you leave them on the floor, there's a good chance you're gonna step on it and twist your ankle. Now, simply repeat this process on the other side. Got our outline cut. Now I'm gonna show you guys what to do with your little leftover chunks, like those right there. Take your saw and just chop these little nubs off. Be careful not to go inside your pencil line. Though. Final step, we're gonna pick up our planer and we're gonna hold it at a 90 degree angle. We're gonna switch our grip. So normally you'd have it like this and whatever your dominant hand is, the handle would be. This time we're gonna have the dominant hand be the front and we're gonna put our opposite hand on the back and hold it at a 90 degree angle. And we're gonna run along the outside of the blank very carefully without even opening this most of the time um, and we're going to clean up the outline like that the reason why we use the planer is because the planer creates planes perfectly the only thing that will create wobbles is you you need to set the blank so you're not going to cut your racks you do not want to hit your planer on your racks so set it over to the side a little bit Take a weight, I use this gel gloss all the time, and I just set it in the middle, and then I begin. Now that we've done all that with the planer, I take the shear form and run along it just to tune it up a little bit so that I don't go too far in and mess up my outline. For spots like this where we have little chunks and really tight curves, it's very nice to take the shear form at a 90 degree angle. Round it around. is up against the wall um, got our outline cut trued up now you all know how to do that the next thing we're gonna do is rocker but that's not gonna be till next week uh, no, no, I can't wait. Uh, no. next week you're gonna figure out how to make a perfect rocker for your surfboard it's going to be so good Kelly Slater is going to be hitting you up trying to order a board. Side note, we're going to be doing a board giveaway coming up. I'm going to start giving you clues as to what's going on. Uh, this first one is going to be pretty much people who are the weight of Groms only because it's a small board. So all you older dudes, I'm sorry, this isn't for you. But. It's going to be cool. Groms are going to be stoked. Okay. Thanks for watching. Uh, make sure to subscribe. Stay tuned for the next part where we start doing rockers. And stay tuned so that you know where I'm going to be putting this surfboard that we're giving away.